I almost feel like Uncle Lyle could really even go up to heavyweight because he's that meaty. His little weak jab could get encountered with a guy that's a southpaw, which is gonna be a lot closer to your damn jab, where he just has to evade, boom, and come in with that lead hand. And Uncle Lyle's lead hand is very, very dangerous. Where a guy like Uncle Lyle is gonna have to be careful are those damn kicks, because the winner of this fight is gonna get the next title shot against a guy like Alex Pereira. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Tell the Tape. I am your host, Henry Cejudo, aka Triple C. And on today's Tell the Tape, I am breaking down. That's right, Magomed Anka Live versus Alexander Rachek. Am I saying it right? Rakic. 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 Okay, so we have it. Rakic versus Anka Live. Anka Live, 18 and 1. One, no contest. Two, a guy like Rakic. Who is 14 and 4. 10 KOs, 8, 10 KOs, 8 decisions, 0 submission. This actually kind of surprises me. Two, a guy like Rockage, 9 KOs, 4 decisions, and 1 submission. 6-5. That's crazy, dude. Like the 6-5 and on up, like that's like a whole nother category. There's a lot of 6-3, 6-4, but once you hit that 6-5, you're a big, big, you're a big boy. Reach, reach advantage is also for Alexander. And then obviously age, I love this fight. I'm gonna go back and say this guys, that I love this fight. I love the fight that this fight, I love the fact that this fight is very similar, similar in height, similar in, in KOs, you know, you know, similar in somewhat the record, like the amount of fights that they've had and similar in age. But without further ado, guys, let's get down to Magomed Anka Live. What are his strengths? He's a Sambo ace, man. He comes from that lineage. He comes from Khabib. He comes from these guys. He comes from that lineage. Like the, the, one of their national sports, obviously the greatest sport in Russia, it is wrestling. But what, what, what may be like the national sport by the diplomacy is probably Sambo. But that being said, man, if this dude's got Sambo, he needs to pull it out. He needs to use it a little bit more. But that's where he's, ironically, that's that's one of his greatest strengths. And he's a southpaw uh, kickboxer, which is something that I will say that Uncle Live would have trouble. Why? Because the same thing with Khalil. Khalil was southpaw. We saw how much he was able to get in actually hurt a guy like Alex Pereira. You know, actively engages at distance. You know, this dude is... Uh, this too because of his length, because he's a real light heavyweight, like he's able to really cover ground according to his distance, whether it's kicks, whether it's punches, whether whether he's possibly maybe looking for a takedown, like it's there. But the dude understands his range very, very well. And because he's able to cover his speed at that, his speed, like he, he's a real light heavyweight. I almost feel like Uncle Lyle could really even go up to heavyweight because he's that meaty. But that being said, his his striking is super scary because he's always in position. Uncle Lyle, I'm surprised. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised by this, honestly. I knew he had the background, but how active he was in the sport of Sambo. He can always pull that out if he does fight, you know, guys that already have championship belts. But his striking power and his speed is absolutely ridiculously fast. You know, but let's talk about his weaknesses. And this is scary right here. Because there's one thing that Rockich did do very well against a guy like Yuri Prohachka. He kicked him. He kicked, kick, 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 kick. Luckily, Yuri's super like level-headed and strong-minded that he was able to switch and stay in that opposite set. He was able to fight him that way. You know? And because of his speed, you know, there, there's less power in his hands because of speed. With something where there's a lot of speed, boom, there's a lot of flick. Rather than, you know, at, at, at this division, you want more of that thump. You know, that's one thing that I will say about Uncle Live is because he does have that speed, it takes away a little bit of that power. And he needs to go back and really, if he can humble himself in this sense and really bring back that wrestling, because the winner of this fight is going to get the next title shot against a guy like Alex Pereira. I know this guy's already sick of people, you know, talking about him and that, the UFC and all the fans are all sick of that. 
But if he's able to bring more of that fight IQ with the wrestling, then that's what it is. And because he does have zero submissions in BJJ, not necessarily say that he's weak. I'm gonna take that, that was my producer. His name is Dylan Rush. He's trying to get me killed against Ankaliyev, but he needs to pull it out. He needs to pull out that, that Sambo and potentially some of that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But let's talk about his opponent, Alexander Rakic. He is a physical specimen. He really is, man. Like what he was able to do with Yuri before he got finished, I'm like, man, this dude is a lot better than what I actually thought. Tank, solid muscle, you know, it's tall, uh, ability, agility. He has a whole nine. And he's got the, he's, he's got kind of like that Dutch kickboxing, that European style of Muay Thai. You know what I'm saying? Where they, they're able to move a lot more, play the distance game a lot more as he uses his kicks and whatnot. And that's one thing that I will say where a guy like Uncle Lai is going to have to be careful of those damn kicks because Uncle Lai, they get kicked a lot by the Polish power. People forget that. A lot of feints to find his distance. He's constantly, he's inching himself in. He's at that right distance. He's not, he doesn't fight emotional until he does get emotional. You know what I'm saying? If a guy like Rockets could stay very, very disciplined with the stands and his distance, because, because he is a physical step specimen, he is gonna be a hard guy to beat. But his variety of combinations mixes up very, very well. He kind of lost his mind against Yuri. But man, I can also see Yuri really brought that pace. Really, Yuri really took that spirituality that he has, he took it to a whole nother damn level, you know? But without further ado, let's talk about Alexander Rakic's weaknesses. You know, he has multiple ACL surgeries. Do you guys know that? I mean, that's time off where you're just sitting down, maybe just rehabbing. Like I'd rather blow something outside where at least I'm still walking on my feet. But when you're just sitting down or you don't, there's not much to do, then it's it's hard, man. I can only imagine what these guys go through for knee surgeries on multiple occasions. And he's gonna have to be careful because his weak jab could also get him countered. His little weak jab could get encountered with a guy that's a southpaw, which is gonna be a lot closer to your damn jab, but he just has to evade, boom, and come in with that lead hand. And Uncle Live's lead hand is very, very dangerous. And lack of head movement, and particularly when he's going backwards, go back to that Yuri fight. That dude was on rollerblades, he was on skates, and he had a hard time with a guy like Yuri. And, you know, because he's always in wars, you know, his overall striking defense is, you know, it's because he, this guy likes to go to war. This guy likes to feel that he actually got into a fight and that he actually fought. So I feel like it's more of who he is. I don't think it has to do nothing with the fans. He's just a goer and he wants to make sure that whatever he did in fight camp, that it really just separates him and, he's, and, it's, able to, and it's able to be seen in these fights. And here we have it, Magomed Anku live. And these are the, these are these are these are stats. Let's let's get down to the strikes. Stats: strikes landed per minute, three point six four for Anku live to Alexander Rachik, four point two six, because he throws down more. Strikes absorb per minute. Now defensively, this guy's smarter. And typically, you see a guy that's a little more smarter and calculated with his hands. He could be a risk taker with somebody that doesn't have that much, you know, absor absorption of actually getting hit are also dangerous too, because that means they're calculated. Takedown accuracy, 31% for Magomed Ankalaev. Takedown defense, wow, at 86. And this might be the first time in tell the tape where this thing is absolutely even. And then obviously a submission average because Alexander does have one submission, you'd give it to him there. The reason why I like bringing up the stats is because this is real. You know, th this is where a lot of these like different companies go out there to actually really see what is it that's going on. And this is how this is how they decide who these betting companies are more likely going to win. It's not based on the people, it's, it's based on the stats. It's based on the numbers. So watching this fight overall, 
I mean, with Uncle Live being 18 and one, and you know Alexander having multiple losses, and the fact that these guys know that the winner of this fight is more likely to get that next title shot, I just feel like Uncle Live is just too much, man. I personally feel like he's just too much for the whole. He's just too much for the whole heavy for the light heavyweight di division. You know, there's a reason why he's not getting that Alex Pedeta fight. Because he knows this guy is super, super dangerous. So for that reason, guys, I'm putting a medallion. I do believe that this guy is the pending light heavyweight champion of the world. And that is your talent tape. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C. And this video is brought to you by the one and only Lifted Trucks. You may be a short king. You may be 5'4", twisted, still sex appeal. But guess what, guys? Out on the street, I'm about 12 feet damn tall. So you guys make sure to go to liftedtrucks.com and get your lift on. I'm out!